Would you stand to your feet and turn to Romans, the sixth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse, and I'm going to read through the sixth verse, and then I'm going to go in and out and go as the Holy Ghost leads me in this word that he wants me to present today to you. And I want you to know I ain't stepping on nobody's toes today. I am here to help you. I told God, I know everybody ain't going to make it in heaven. And somebody even said everybody ain't going to make it in heaven. They said that. Which is true. <laughs> heaven is your home if you desire to be your home. And let me tell you, I'd rather be there on this earth any day. And I sure don't want to go to hell. So these messages are here to help you. Because somebody tell me, well, if God spoke to you and God gave you all these encounters, you're supposed to have others. I know I was supposed to have others. But he had to transform my way of thinking. He had to transform me even in my way of living. And people don't even understand it today. They don't understand me. They don't understand the decisions I made. They don't understand who I'm around. But I want you to take a look at this. If you see my growth in Christ, that should be enough for you. Am I right? That should be enough for you. You shouldn't question anything else. Because God is in the plan where you see him moving. And the only way he can move on me is I let him move on me to increase me in him. Let us read. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue Romans 6 chapter. First on at the first verse. You got to say amen. Amen. All right. I'll read and you just follow along. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live longer therein? Know ye not? That so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death? Wherefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. In likeness of his death, we also, in likeness of his resurrection. Somebody say, I want to rise. rise. Knowing this, <laughs> that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Let me tell you, you, you don't just have to sandwich 
spiritual body only. Amen. Amen. Sin comes in all kinds of forms, likeness and ways. That's right. <laughs> you can sin with your mind. A double-minded man, God ain't pleased with. If God ain't pleased with a double-minded man, you ain't making it into heaven. God ain't pleased with wavering-minded people. You you serve God today, and the men in the park comes around. I'm talking about the mind. I'm getting on the mind now. The men in the park came and come around. You ain't serving God no more. You go right back to your old ways. Did y'all just read this? What Paul said? We should be crucified. Into the newness of life. What is newness of life? Christ like. Why do we gotta go back and forth, back and forth? I'm on my track today. I'm on a path today, but next week I am on a path. It don't work like that. Every day you get on that path of righteousness. Every day you enter into that straight gate, you stay in there like your life depended on it because your life does depend on it. And you know why I say your life depends on it? Because death can come at any time. It's an unescapable appointment. And it can catch you. is in sin. Amen. And I think everybody in here should be attuned to this message. There should be no distractions because this is going to be the last time for some of you all to get this right. You think I like getting messages like this? These messages come through harsh. Makes me look ugly. You know, it makes me look like I'm picking on somebody. And when God said you got to tell it, you got to tell it. Because people are in this delusional state. Satan has a delusional spirit over the eyes of many of you. You think that coming to church, you're going to heaven. When God told me, I want all of you. I don't want just your action in your ways. I want your mind. I want your heart. I want your soul. And I had to think about the mind. Because I was sinning in the mind. I wasn't sinning with the flesh. I was sinning in the mind. My mind had an addiction. You know how we talk addiction of drugs, alcohol, marijuana. I had an addiction in the mind, fantasizing, hoping to be in this lifestyle that I yearned for. So my mind was on those things. Marriage, the man I had envisioned for the marriage. And God wanted my mind to be on Him. See, I can talk about myself. And you can receive it well, can't you? But when I begin to talk about some of the things you're doing, you don't receive it as well. But what I preach, I want you to know this today, is for me first. I have to line myself up with the Word of God. It ain't for you all, it's for me too. But Paul is saying to the church, because the church has gotten so complacent like some of y'all are today. What shall I say then? Shall you continue in sin? I don't even have to call it out today, because if I did, you would get upset. When God began to show me things, you would have made me a liar. Oh my God. And my God don't lie. The devil lies. He's the creator of all lives. So I'm going to talk about me right now. Because I ain't in 
And he's given me and he placed within me a strong spirit of discernment. Don't mess with my discernment. And tell me to watch myself. Don't do that. Because I know who I'm serving. You might not like the changes I made in my life. But don't mess with my discernment. Because this discernment comes from God most high. I'm old enough. I'm sensible enough. I'm 55 years old. And I know right from wrong. And I thank God I can deserve true people from untrue people. My life been turned around for three years. You think I got three years to waste? And the people around me to waste? When God is positioning me for something great? And I sure want to give up two weeks ago. I put my head in. And I say, I'm done. God said, okay, you done? You want to go to hell? <laughs> you, you done? No, okay. You can be done, but the choice is yours. Because when you're in the will of God, you got to do what God said to And when I heard that, and I already had my sisters on me, I know I disappointed them. I was ready to give up. Ready to give up. And I thought about it. How am I going to deliver some people? Because we think we're all right. I thought I was all right. I thought I was on my way to heaven. And I thank God. He gave me an encounter. And he wants to give some of you an encounter, but you're running from it. You're running from it. Because you want to justify your sin. Just like I wanted to justify mine. I had a brother tell me that I'm keeping you from sinning with the brothers on the outside. You see what has crept up in, crept up in the church? You better know God. And I had another one tell me the sins are blessed as a man who sins are covered. It might be covered among y'all in here, but it ain't covered in God's eyes. And the word of God tells me sin separates me from hell. From God. Get out of bed and 
you start making up stuff in your mind. And you, let me tell you, you can make up someone stuff in your mind that you think God talked to you. Well said. Demons was even talking to me. And I thought it was God. Demons can talk to you. Oh, yeah. Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. That's what the word says. But I can tell you one thing. If you, you, when the demons begin to talk to you, just pay attention. And you can question what not it's of God because anything God speaks is going to come to pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it don't take a long time for it to come to pass. Am I right? But I'm going to tell you this so I can encourage you. When I turned my life over and I gave up what Angie wanted to do and went in the path God wanted me to, money is not a problem. Paying bills is not a problem. He's given me favor beyond favor. I had favor before, but nothing like the real favor of God. And he will do it for the righteous. You want to know why? It's like one hand for the other. You please me, I'm going to please you right. Now you trust in me, I'm going to make a way out of no way. He said, I've never seen the righteous what? I've never seen the righteous seen what? Okay, can we just get righteous today and get out of sin? If you're in sin, I got news for you, you're not righteous. You can convince yourself all you want to. You can go home at the church, call somebody on the phone, and you can try to dispute this word. But let me tell you something. You're fighting against me, you're fighting against God. Because God gave you this word today. And you might not like it. But if you want to live if you want deliverance, if you want to be set free, yes. do you want us to be set free today? I want freedom. Yes. I want liberty in Christ. Yes. I don't want to be bound to sin. Yes. If you want it, you're going to take this message in. Trust me. And I told God, I said, give them that experience what I have. My experience can't be your experience. How many know that God has all of us uniquely made? And he might have a different experience to convince you. And that experience could be coming from this pulpit right now. Do you know God has angels in heaven waiting to work for righteous people? They just waiting to come down. Angels are just waiting, but God is waiting on us. We can't even worship God because our mind is so, so, so congested. And when the world tells us, think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are pure. Think on those things that are just. But we want to take our mind over to somebody else's problems. Oh, we want to take this mind into somebody else's affairs. And when the word of God say to us, cast your cares upon me and leave them there. We can try to figure something out and God has already worked it out. Free your mind, people. Free your mind. Free your bodies. Free your bodies. Free it from sin. Sin is a killer. Sin is like infirmity. It's a cancer that eats away your eternal life. Now, if you don't want eternal life, keep on sinning. Keep on sinning. Because you ain't getting into heaven. I'm telling you point blank. And I know you don't like me. Because you say, who am I to put you in heaven or hell? I ain't put you there. You put yourself there. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to keep you out of hell. I can't put you in heaven. And I can't put you in hell. Like the old saying say, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't force him to drink it. I can take you to the path, up to that path of that's right, up to that path of righteousness, but it's up to you to walk into the gate. It's up to you to walk into that to that straight gate. That straight gate don't have no curves and lines. That straight gate is you putting your eyes on God and keeping them focused on Him. That straight gate takes your mind off 
for you now. And it goes to the one who helps you. You get it? Now, I'm going to give you an example. I can have a situation where, and sometimes we got to see what God ain't in. We got to see what God ain't in something. I tried to help somebody with the sale of a house. And no matter what I did, we kept going into these block doors. I tried this, I tried that. And God had to literally tell me, he ain't blessing that man because his wife is treacherous. I said, oh my God, you're protecting this man? You're protecting this man? So you're gonna block him from buying a house? Because the wife is taking advantage of him? And then God began to show me the more time I spent around him, the more I saw how the wife was. She was controlling, she was manipulating, and the man was taking care of a whole entire family, even paying her mama rent. And God allowed me to see it two times. I waited on them at us. And, 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 and she said, I'll be right back in that chase making the, my mom mortgage payment. The next month, same thing. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you got your husband taking care of your whole family. And I walk in the business, the whole family works in his business. None of his family now. But all of them. And it just put me in mind and said, oh my God, you love this man so much that you don't even want him to walk into a mistake. I said, and you know what? I minister to the man. He's, he, he comes from Muslim background. But he listens to me. And I said, you know what? God is going to give you the house in his time. His time. The man called me yesterday. He said, I want you to start back up. But I know God is going to work that thing out. Either she's going to come in line or he's going to bless him with a house but him and his family only. But I said that to say this. When you become righteous, God gives you true and real discernment. And he makes things happen. And what not supposed to happen, he let you see the reason why it doesn't happen. Sometimes we want things and we want it for ourselves. We want it so bad and we work so hard. And every time we work hard, there's a stumbling block. Don't you know it could be God warning you? God can warn you even before you get into disastrous business plans. Every business that comes your way, you're not supposed to go into. But I said that to say this. When you serve God with a true heart, a true mind, and you just give him your mind every day. When you get home, don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about what you should have had. Don't worry about what should have happened. Don't worry why it ain't happened this way or if it should have happened that way. You just continue to thank God and thank God. Work it out. The answers you've been waiting for 7, 10, 15 years, you'll begin to get them. But he, because he said, now I got your mind. I got you where I want you to, Angie. Your mind ain't wavering off on getting married or this man or vain imagination. Your mind is on me and me only. And then he said, I got your body. Your body ain't thinking about the lust of the flesh. All you want your body for is to be used for my purpose and my glory. Now I got your body. And then he said, I got your heart because now you don't took all that unforgiveness out. Yeah! I had that in me. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. It was right here. And I remember one time I told you a story about the angel that came to me and told me you ain't got it right yet when I, I sent you to pray. And I prayed, and about two or three weeks later, the angel came back. I said, is my heart free yet? Because you know angels can see your heart. I said, 
The angel said, no, you still got it in there. I said, but what do I need to do? Think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are just. Think on those things that are pure. And the more you take your mind off of your enemies, they begin to be deposited out of your heart. It's like a withdrawal. You know how we deposit them in when we hold on to what they've done to us, how they hurt us. Now we got them in the heart. Now you got to take that withdrawal from the bank. Like you got to empty that bank account out. You got to empty your heart out. Don't think about them. Don't wish bad on them. The word of God tells us to what? Pray for our enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you too. And you can even bless them if you want to. They need money to save something. You give them some money. Bless those that curse you. Oh yeah. And people might call you crazy. But you're doing it because you're doing it because of the love of God that's inside of you. Now remember, you lose flesh out of the way. And Paul is trying to tell these people in Roman. Tell you, I mean, are you going to continue sinning? We were crucified with Christ. We were crucified in the flesh. And, 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 and on that day of our death, we're going to be rise up. That's what we're looking for, to be rise up to heaven. He was resurrected into heaven. And we're coming into the newness of life. We're coming into Christ. So because we're coming into Christ, we, we, we're go, we took the death and the barrier with us. Because now we're dead to sin. You see my point? You're dead to sin now. Sin ain't part of you. And because you're dead to sin, you are a new creature. Am I right? Oh, yeah. How many want to be a new creature in here tonight? How many are tired of being enslaved to sin? And when we think about sin, the first thing we think about is a body. Of what we put in our mouth. Of what we smoke. Yeah, that's sin. And you can get rid of all of that and then you got another sin right there in your mind. <laughs> you might not have a problem with the body addictions. Let me tell you, Satan is such a, a disguiser. He got so many people fooled. And let me tell you, Satan knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. He said, okay, I'm going to crucify the flesh. So I'm going to get a mind now. I'm going to have her mind wavering minded. I'm going to have her double minded. I'm going to have her mind uh, 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 on this when it shouldn't be on that on vain imagination. And then when you free your mind, he try to attack the heart. Now he want to hold stuff in your heart. And that's where Christmas falls short there because now they got unforgiveness in there. Jealousy. We're drawing out, people. We're drawing out. Take it out. Jealousy continue to hell. Yes. Jealousy is as cruel as what? The grave. And jealousy is as cruel as witchcraft. Yes. And we know with witchcraft, they work with the objects and say, you the candles and the chin. Jealousy is just like that. Because when you hate somebody enough, you'll hate everybody around them. Yes. Because you don't like how God is elevating me, you won't like people who I surround myself with. Because you think, And we should be celebrating people. Yeah. If God is elevating me, you should be proud of me. Now, let me ask a question. Would you be proud if I was out there in the world committing sin? No. No. You see the trick of the enemy? Yes. Now, you might have your mind. Your mind might be right. And I know jealousy. I had to battle with that before. It tried to creep on me. And I said, and I, and I even went to the person, I said, wait a minute. I have never battled with this before, but jealousy wasn't a thing with me. With me, it might have been unforgiveness and bitterness and vain imagination. But that jealousy thing never been a part of me. And I, and I felt it coming on me like four years ago. And I went, I think I went to my mama. I said, I need prayer. Because And the woman was nothing to compare to me, and I ain't putting myself on no path. 
pedestal, but it was jealousy. I said, something is wrong with me. I didn't even experience that in my marriage. As a matter of fact, I was pushing him towards other women, so he didn't leave me. <laughs> and then I experienced this, and that's what the Holy Ghost would do for you. It would bring things to your remembrance. I got on my knees, I prayed, I dumped it out of my heart, and I got rid of the man. All right. Because he was carrying a spirit on him that made me react that way. I don't know about y'all, but my soul salvation is a very important thing. Some women might not do that because they feel like they can't live their life alone. But let me tell you, I'd rather be alone and go to heaven than to be with somebody and go to hell. You don't you know people can send you to hell too? Those you associate with, you surround yourself with, they can send you to hell. Because people got this thing because you don't like a person, I'm not supposed to like her. And that ain't godliness. Paul is saying, forbid not. Should we continue in sin? And, and, and we should not have to be reminded of sin every time we sin because the Holy Ghost is there. That's why I say, do, we really, do you really have the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost ain't going to let you rest in contempt when you're in sin. I don't know about you, but when I was in sin, I was, I was weighing down so heavy. to all of us. It's not okay. Because no man can at the same time be both <laughs> dead and alive. True believers are dead to sin. Did you hear me this morning? I said true believers are dead to sin. Did you understand that today? You can't be dead and alive at the same time. Death of sin stops your blessings. Sin separates you from God. Life is in Christ. He's our life. He's our mind regulator. He crucifies our flesh. He makes us strong. He is our strength. I don't know about you, but I want life. Amen. And I want to be dead to every oh, sin. Yes. Yes. Sin in my mind. Yes. Sin in my body. Yes. Sin in my flesh. I don't care what kind of money you need, woman. If a man offers you to give you money, for any sexual favors, don't take it. Your salvation is more important. I had a man about 10 years ago. He knew I was single. My boys was young at the time. He was in the military making like $200,000. He told me he knew I needed money to help the boys. And he was very cunning with it. He said, all you have to do is when I come in town, be my escort. Oh, I don't think so. I needed money bad at that time, but I needed Jesus more. Amen. 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 
And this is what I mean when I say separate yourself. Amen. People can take you to hell. Romans 6 and 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Whatever you yield yourself to, that's what you're the servant of. If you're yielding yourself to sin, you're a servant of sin. And being a servant of sin classifies you as a servant of Satan. Because you're obeying him rather than obeying God. And the rest of the scripture says, this is a word, it ain't just coming by me. I mean, you, you got it there, right there in plain English. I started in Romans 6 and 1. 1 through 6, take it home, read it, meditate on it. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. I don't know about you, but I don't want to send myself to death and hell. I want to obey God into the path of righteousness for Amen. his name's Amen. sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.